Hey guys, Barnyard here from freeforcet.io and today we're going to be talking about a really interesting new technology called IPFS. We're going to talk about what exactly IPFS is, how it might take over the internet and become the new internet protocol instead of HTTP. We're going to look at some technical specifications of IPFS and really go deep into how it works at a technical level and then we're going to discuss use cases and why this is such a revolutionary piece of technology. So if you're new to the channel, please leave a like on this video and subscribe. We talk about everything cryptocurrency, blockchain and so centralized applications. So let's jump right into IPFS right now and look at how it works and why it's so amazing. Okay, so what is IPFS? Well, IPFS stands for Interplanetary File System, and basically it is a different type of internet protocol that people can use to access content on the internet. On the internet that we know and love at the moment, we're using a thing called HTTP or HTTPS, which is the secure version of HTTP. And basically the way that works is you're a user and you want to connect to a, another server to get some information, let's say some files or something like that. If you're wanting to connect to, for example, YouTube and get some cat videos, you would send a request to youtube.com and say, I would like this certain video. And then they will serve you that video from their server to you. That's how the internet works at the moment. And there's a whole bunch of problems with that um, that we'll go into later in the video. So how does IPFS differ from this model? Well, basically, instead of files being hosted on a centralized server, files are actually hosted on a decentralized model, meaning that if you were to want to connect and get a certain video, instead of going to one centralized area to find that video, the video would actually be hosted on a whole bunch of different nodes scattered around the internet. And this is really good because decentralized applications are way more secure. And what I mean by that, no central authority is able to just remove one server and get rid of a file because it's decentralized all over a whole bunch of different file of uh, different servers. Okay, so that's one reason why IPFS is going to be really good if it gets adopted into the mainstream. Another reason is that it can actually be way more efficient depending on how all of these little pieces of a file are scattered across the internet. So let's say that you actually wanted to get a YouTube video from YouTube servers. Let's say that this video is super, super popular and a million people are trying to get this video all at once. Okay, this is going to be a problem for YouTube because they're going to have a lot of um, problems getting this video to everyone really quickly because their bottleneck is going to be that they have one server or maybe just a few servers that are all serving this content to people. Okay, but if this content was on IPFS, the more people that were watching the video, the more people would be hosting this video. So when you're watching it and you're downloading that content, you as a IPFS node are all also serving this content to other people. So the more people that are watching it, actually the faster it would become to serve this content to other people. Okay, there's a whole bunch of problems with HTTP being centralized. And one of the main problems with this is that it is very easy to censor um, information if you are a government authority or something like that. So let's say a good example is that Turkey actually made Wikipedia illegal in their country as they considered a national threat. So basically what they did was they went to all the ISPs and said, you are no longer allowed to serve Wikipedia to the Turkish people. And this was very easy for them to do because everything was very centralized. Wikipedia was centralized onto one IP address. So people weren't able to get to that IP address because all the ISPs just said, no, you're no longer allowed to go to the ISP. So if Wikipedia was on IPFS, it would actually be impossible for these internet service providers to block because the, all the content isn't stored on one area. It's actually stored all over IPFS. And the more people are using it, the more nodes this information is stored on. So it would be absolutely impossible for the internet service providers to block the content because there's no one place that they'd be able to block the content. So this is another reason why IPFS is a super revolutionary piece of technology. Okay, so let's get technical and talk about exactly how IPFS works. So essentially, when you connect to IPFS, you yourself are running a node on the network. And basically, when you are looking for content, all of the pieces of content that you might want to connect each have their own unique identifier, which is a hash of the content that you're looking to get. So let's say that you want to get a cat video. This video itself is going to be distributed into blocks of 256 kilobytes. Okay. And then you're going to have like a master block, which has links to all of these little blocks of the content that are stored all over IPFS. So. Basically, this unique identifier is actually a hash of all the content 
of that video that you want to download. And this is a way that you can make sure that the content is actually what you're wanting to download because a hash is always going to be the same if you're hashing the content, um, if the content is the same. So if you're gonna get a video and break it up into parts of 256 kilobytes and then hash all of those and then get the master hash, that hash will always be the same as long as the content that you're hashing is the same. So this is really secure because it means that people can't pretend to send you different content when you requested one specific type of content. Okay, so what sort of applications can you build upon IPFS and what is IPFS really gonna be used for and is um, gonna be really revolutionary for. So any application that you really don't want to be censored or that requires you to transfer a whole bunch of data really fast is really going to benefit from IPFS. So one example is Wikipedia because it's going to be very difficult for anyone to censor you if you're giving out information in a decentralized way. Another way that would be really handy would be advertising networks because it really removes any middleman for um, buying and selling adverts, you can put it in a decentralized model and make it way more efficient to give your advertising space to people who want to advertise. Another way that people could use IPFS is for things like marketplaces. And we're already seeing some marketplaces that are decentralized pop up like Open Bazaar and things like that. Another one that's really interesting is going to be cryptocurrency exchanges because it means that it is more secure and also it means that it's not going to be able to be taken down by central authorities and things like that. So any, anywhere that you really want some security and you want to have the freedom to do and say whatever you want and not have to worry about being censored or being taken down, IPFS is going to be really good for you. So people like politicians are going to use IPFS. That's going to be really good. People who want to transfer data safely and securely are going to really want to use IPFS because they're going to have the flexibility of the decentralization and not have to worry about being throttled and things like that. So really any situation where you're distributing data or you're wanting security, IPFS is going to be really helpful in doing what you want. So my opi personal opinion is IPFS is going to replace HTTP, but I think it's going to take quite a long time because it's such a new technology and it's such a different technology that is used in a such a different way compared to HTTP. Because with HTTP, you know, you've got one model, which is a lot of people going to one place and then you have IPFS, which is a lot of people going to a lot of places in a decentralized way. And this is a really, really different way of using the internet. So I hope you really enjoyed this video. Please leave in the comments what you thought about IPFS. And if you have any more knowledge about IPFS, we can share that in the description in the comments and let everybody know about it. Please like and subscribe if you did enjoy the content and hit that bell as well so you don't miss any more content like this in the future. And thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.